Hello, good afternoon, Michael Wynn, Chief Digital Officer of Digital Ops, a division of RB Oppenheim Associates. Happy Friday, and today, guys, we're gonna talk about something that, again, uh, I see come up um, time and time again, and that is, is it time to update your website, your business website? And I think a lot of the questions center around which content management system should I pick? Uh, so I think it's pretty safe to say that everyone's familiar with the name WordPress. Maybe you've seen Squarespace, maybe you've seen Wix, maybe you've heard of Joomla. Uh, there's definitely several platforms that are out there, but today I wanna talk about, because recently we've had a couple of projects that we've been working on where companies wanted to migrate from the Joomla platform to WordPress. Um, and there are good reasons to use um, you know, Joomla as well as WordPress. And so I thought I'd spend a little bit of time to talk about um, each one of the uh, content management systems and give you a better idea of uh, what you're working with. So WordPress was published in 2003, um, typically known as a blogging platform. It now populates and powers over 33% of all websites on the internet. Uh, not just blogs, uh, which currently makes it, uh, it currently holds 60% of the market share when it comes to content management. Uh, so think of it, um, that means if it started in 2013, we're in 2019 at 16, so it's roughly a freshman, sophomore in high school when it comes to its evolution as a product and as a software. Uh, Joomla, its counterpart, which is currently the second most popular content management system, which currently powers approximately 3% of all websites uh, on the internet and holds roughly 5.4% of the content management market share. So those two factors, when you think about it, and, and just so you know, Squarespace is roughly 3%. Uh, which is probably the most popular as they've been, you know, really powering and, and spending money to, to get their name out there um, uh, in, in as far as commercial uh, promotion and brand awareness. But uh, Joomla still ranks second place um, for now. However, um, its, its market share has begun to shrink ever since 2017. Um, and I think part of that is due and partly because of um, the, the scale and the amount of uh, developers who are looking to continue to build upon um, the platform itself and, and how you see it scaling. So, you know, typically when you compare those two platforms, uh, WordPress calls um, the functionality, when, when WordPress can do things, it's functionality, it, it, it extends them by using what's called plugins, whereas Joomla calls them extensions. Um, and then when you wanna make it look pretty, WordPress calls uh, these items themes, and Joomla calls them templates. So uh, a lot of times those things get confused, but here's where things get really interesting. So currently WordPress has around 54,000 plus free plugins offered through WordPress that are part of the free uh, repository or the group or the sets of plugins that are available. Again, that number is 54,000. Um, and roughly inside of WordPress, there are about 5,000 free themes available through WordPress. So, you know, that really kind of gives you an idea. When you compare that to Joomla, um, there are roughly 8,000 extensions listed in the Joomla extension library. So that's a pretty big disparity when you talk about the difference between 8,000 and 54,000, right? Um, so that's really sort of one of the things that makes a difference when you are trying to um, have your website accomplish something that's a little bit outside the norm uh, when it comes to functionality. So keep that in mind when, you know, if you're just building a basic website, um, you know, you're gonna find that out of the gate, WordPress is gonna be a little more user-friendly in terms of setting up. Um, you know, typically Joomla's um, strength has been the ability to 
um, out of the box give specific user role permissions. So let's say if you have a manager and a director and then you have sales staff, um, you know, and so you have sort of a hierarchy of people who are gonna be administrating content on your website. Um, that was one of Joomla's strengths, however, uh, as the plugin community continues to develop plugins and add-ons and functionality for WordPress. Now you can install a plugin and accomplish that same type of um, uh, capabilities, but it doesn't come right out of the box. Um, one of the big differences, because uh, WordPress started off as a blogging platform and Joomla started off as a content management system, um, WordPress is going to be innately better at um, creating blog content and individual categorized and or topic based um, pieces of content and, and, you know, leverage that for search engine optimization, which is a great idea. Um, whereas on the Joomla side, again, that ability to create profiles and, and access specific content areas of your site, um, you know, it, it's out of the box functionality of that was important. Now, if you don't need all of that, then WordPress would make sense. And a lot of the different hosting environments that are out there today um, allow you to do a one-click installation of either one, so both are available. I think the largest thing to think about, too, is if you're gonna be working in an environment where you know, your platform powers 33% of the web uh, compared to 5% of the web, the pool of the amount of people that are out there that are available to work on your site is huge. There's a huge disparity between those event, those numbers, right? So it's going to be a lot easier to find someone who can, you know, give you updates and insights. Um, you know, there's there's plenty of free resources. Like if you go to YouTube and just type in WordPress and hit search, there are literally tens of thousands of videos that show you how to do, you know, various things. Um, and also, you know, obviously have that drag and drop capability. And I think that's probably one of the biggest things that we've seen that people have come to us who currently have a Joomla website who want to convert it to WordPress because someone that they just hired or someone that's on their staff knows WordPress, you know, because they use it when they were in school or, you know, they've had their own personal blog, so they're familiar with it, but they just can't quite grasp the Joomla platform. So um, we recently uh, undertook a huge project, um, a Joomla site with over 1,400 pieces of content that we had to convert into uh, the WordPress uh, platform, and that was an undertaking. Um, but it is possible. Um, the reverse, not so much. Um, but I, I think that that's something to, to realize and know that, hey, you're not stuck. If your site has been running on Joomla for you know, the last seven, eight, nine years, and you're frustrated because you know you don't have the flexibility of themes and you know drag and drop and categorization for blog content not having a blog as easily as wordpress um you can convert a joomla site to wordpress it is possible um there's lots of resources out there and and heck if you don't want to look it up and you just need an expert give me a call it'd be great um but i think as we continue to look at what about security um, I think it's interesting, obviously, with WordPress garnering 33% of the market, um, according to Security, which is a, a very popular security measurement, uh, it, that uh, WordPress accounts for about 74% of the hacks that are uh, that were hacked in their sample size, uh, which is about 25% larger than its market share. Uh, however, when you compare that to Joomla security, um, being that they only accounted for in their in, in securities report only 17% of hacked websites, um, the the amount of sites that were hacked in its um, uh, group sampling was 132% higher than its 7.3% market share. So this is really common. One of the things that we find it, it, is this. Joomla as a platform is, is a little more difficult to update than WordPress with its one-click update process. Um, to update the Joomla content management system itself, it requires more of a manual, you know, download the files from Joomla, uh, FTP and upload into your server, um, you know, delete the old version, uh, and then install the new one. So those are really important features to remember. 
I think that if if I were thinking about you know if if I were an administrator or executive director and I had a site and I knew it was on Joomla, I would really be thinking about the future and thinking about the the upside, the potential um, that WordPress offers. I think that's something that, from a security standpoint, from um, flexibility and scalability, it's definitely something to consider. But when it comes to security, I do think that you know you can have all of the best um, security features activated on your website, but at the end of the day, users are the greatest vulnerability. Um, you know because we are so lazy sometimes, and we try to set passwords that we can remember. Uh, and usually those types of passwords are the ones that are the easiest to hack. Um, so keep that in mind as you're trying to decide if you're going to upgrade your website for 2019. And if you've got a Joomla site and you want to update it and convert it to WordPress, it is possible. So um, again, that's just something that we've been working on uh, over the last couple of weeks. I figured I'd take a few minutes and talk to you guys about it. Uh, I hope you guys had a great week. Again, don't forget, starting March 1st, uh, a week from today, uh, we're going to start our first uh, video podcast series on the book Traction, uh, which is a fantastic book that, that is all about building scale into your business. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that, sharing uh, the video and podcast space with my good friend Katie Lilly from Lilyfield Accounting Solutions. Guys, thank you so much. I hope you have a great week. I look forward to sharing with you guys on Monday. Have a good weekend, and we'll check you out next time. Again, my name is Michael Wynn. I'm the Chief Digital Officer at Digital Ops, a division of RB Oppenheim Associates. Have a great weekend.